I was like 10 years old when like puberty was in like full swing. I got my period at like 11. Mm -hmm. And so I was obsessed. I was like, oh my God, I can't wait to go home and masturbate. Holy shit. Um, And let's say, hmm, I think I was 11. And so I got my first boyfriend in middle Mm -hmm. school. And I was on one hand, like very like shy and nervous, but mostly the people aspect of it like how do you get from like talking to a person to sex Mm -hmm. like like how how do i make that happen um and with that he was a good christian boy and he was like no we shouldn't do that and it's like why let me touch your wiener please and i did during art class one time it was fantastic Um, (laughs) (laughs) i just like kind of felt it above his pants um and so with that, we were also like on like Google chat and like, ooh, like maybe after school, like, you know, you could finger me. Mm-hmm. And he was like, oh, yeah, we could do that. And uh, yeah, we'll like, you know, put a sweatshirt like over us. And it's like, we'll just we'll just do it. And um, it's like the middle school I went to was kind of like a like a boarding middle school. So mm-hmm. there was like day students and boarding students. Mm-hmm. We were both day students, but like you could just go to the dorms after school to like hang out. Mm-hmm. Um so we're over there, and then my mom rushes in. She's like, what the fuck are you guys doing? Oh, my God. So it turns out she's just, like, looking at my chats and everything, like, on the computer, um, which is, like, okay, fair. Like, doing your, your parenting, mm-hmm. like, making sure I'm not doing anything bad. But at right. the same time, the kind of just shutting down anything sexual mm-hmm. made it so, like, okay, at this point, like, I can't have, like, age-appropriate sexual experiences. Like, mm-hmm. I can't, like, make those little baby steps. Mm-hmm. And so with that... Because, um, like, there's no one, like, guiding you through, like, yeah. what those age-appropriate things are. You had had no sexual education. Yeah, yeah. And it sounds like your parents... I mean, I learned from like, porn, so... Right, which is not sex education. Yeah, yeah. Repeat after me, people. <laughs> porn is not sex education. No, no. <laughs> so, but unfortunately, you know, in situations like yours, when... The parents aren't willing to give their children age appropriate, you know, talks about sex because this is yeah. going to come up. Like everybody goes yeah. through puberty, like we're, yeah. you know, human beings are programmed to mm-hmm. have sexual desires, and if you don't, you know, kind of educate your kids in the right way about like how yeah. to navigate that, it can be very confusing, and it sounds like it went probably the opposite way of what your parents wanted with you. Oh, absolutely, and it's like I was just like always like very sexual like I think maybe because like growing up it's like I was kind of like I'm the youngest and I was kind of a surprise it's Mm -hmm. like my mom had like endometriosis like she has her uterus removed and all of that now but she thought she couldn't get pregnant so like she's just having unprotected sex with my dad for like a few years and then randomly oh another baby Mm -hmm. and so I remember my very like early childhood like always like yelling like oh we can't afford another kid and like my dad being like annoyed with me and all that um so with in, that, in so that, so in, in front of you, in yeah. front of you. Oh, oh yes. So were they referring to having another child? So after me, you? no. They were referring to you yes. directly. So yes. they were talking about how they couldn't afford you. Yeah. In front of you. Yeah. It was like mostly like my dad because like he wouldn't care and like and I remember being like five years old. And my dad being like, "You're trying to split us up. You're trying to get us a divorce." And I'm like, "Oh yes, I'm just a mastermind, a five year old child that's smarter than you." <laughs> that's like an insane amount of emotional guilt to put on a child that's yes. really unfair i'm sorry yes so going through puberty and all of that and having my parents be like so they never took like the laptop away from me that like i was watching porn on mm-hmm. it would just be like my mom would just confront me about it and be like oh you're watching lesbian porn what is that that's disgusting you know I used to think I was a lesbian and it's like but then I uh, I met your sister's father and then like you know your father of course um and you know I'm straight I'm like I was like 12 at the time and I'm like mom isn't that bisexual bisexual doesn't exist that's for greedy people <laughs> greedy people yeah, I was like okay mom um <laughs> I mean fair enough I guess but funny. I've is, never heard that before. That's kind of funny. It is funny. funny. <laughs> so it's like. You can't have all the genders. What about no. people who are pansexual who is like, oh, like anybody who yeah. identifies with any gender or no gender? Yeah, no. I mean, I was that's like, gluttony for sure. I'm a glutton. <laughs> 
But so with that, it was like it was kind of a mix of like her odd, outdated things, but also like just straight like, oh, like you whore, like you're trying to do things with this boy. And it's like I remember her like so I would take nudes on my little shitty cell phone at mm-hmm. like like 12 or so. And um, not great. Like, no, don't recommend doing that. Mm-hmm. But it's like I did do that. And um, I remember this kid, he was like, oh, like, you know your vagina's like hairy that's disgusting and it's like okay i'll shave it and so my mom discovered that i'm shaving my pubes and she was like what the fuck is that it's like you get fucked you get fucked in your pussy that's like all this shit and i'm like (laughs) so that was a little little traumatizing of just like oh god can you just like leave me alone um but with all of that it's like all of that stress and everything it's like So how it all turned out where I did not go back to school was so I brought vodka to school in a water bottle and would have been all fine and good. But my best friend, like she was very good girl and she's like, I'm going to tell the principal. And so she tells on me, she tells on this other kid and all of this stuff. And so basically all kind of just came together of like my parents like, okay, we're going to put her in like a little bad kids program and see what happens um and then I kind of just never went back it's like they put me in uh it's like turnabout ranch it's like what Dr. Phil like sends like little bad kids to Mm -hmm. basically just this like wilderness campy thing in like the middle of Utah where it's like oh like you know we don't make kids behave like we break their will and then they behave okay (laughs) So, yeah, it was, like, first couple days, like, you sleep on plywood, and it's, like, you have to stay in this, like, little teepee. You sleep on plywood? Yes. <laughs> yeah. Like, just plywood? Yeah, just plywood. You're not allowed to have a pillow, and it's, like, you can have, like, your sleeping bag, but, like, it's, like, it was just, like, a regular-ass sleeping bag. It wasn't, like, a like a comfort plush sleeping bag or anything. It was just kind of a blanket. That's how they're going to, that's how they're going to, like, break yes. bad habits. They're going to have you yes. sleep on plywood? Yeah. And then also it's like it was during the winter. So it's like once you're done with your three days of like just sitting in this like little circle of rocks and like you get in trouble if your fire goes out and it's like and they make you like cook little ramen noodles like on your fire and all of that shit. Um, But then once you're done with that, uh, then you start doing chores like shaving logs, like milking cows, like getting uh, like water out of like the frozen creek and like bringing it up to all the animals and all that stuff. And it's Mm -hmm. like on one hand the experience was nice like getting to do all of the physical things it's like oh like i know how to start a fire now with like the rock and the stick and the bow thing and all of that um but also it was like i would have like nightmares for years of like i'm stuck there and there's nothing i can do yeah hey guys if you want to support my show then you should think about joining my patreon At my Patreon, I offer all kinds of amazing perks in exchange for your financial support. From live streams of my interviews as they are happening, to bonus Q and A's, behind the scenes photos and videos of my shoots, plus cool merch like stickers, mugs, and hoodies, we have you covered. So go to patreon.com slash hollyrandallunfiltered, and while you're at it, make sure that you click that subscribe button so you don't miss a single one of my new updates.